Hi everyone. We're on lesson eight. We started with Palm Sunday and we went all through the Holy Week and at the end where Jesus died and was buried and rose again. And then Wednesday of this week we talked about the two disciples on the Emmaus Road. And this would be lesson eight. And if you've missed some of these and you want to back up, they're all in chronological order from Palm Sunday to the Emmaus Road, and they're on my Facebook page. Well, today we're going to be talking about the 12 disciples, so I want to sing that song with you. You know that one? The, the disciples' names are behind me, and Jesus would call his followers when he started his ministry, and he would say, follow me. And they would leave their fishing nets and their tax collector booth or their doctor's office, wherever they worked, and they would quit their job and follow Jesus. A lot of preachers and missionaries do that today. And we need to follow Jesus in our lives. Let's sing it. There were 12 disciples. Jesus called to help him. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James's brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas, and Bartholomew. He has called us to, he has called us to, we are his disciples, I am one and you. He has called us to, he has called us to, we are his disciples, we his work must do. Well, those disciples did follow Jesus, but it was really sad. At one point, right before Jesus died, we found that one of them betrayed him. That was Judas. He sold Jesus for money. And the soldiers and the chief priests would give Judas money. And when Jesus was arrested in the garden, Judas went up and kissed Jesus on the cheek to show the soldiers which person to arrest. And so we don't have Judas as one of our disciples anymore. How sad. Well, Jesus' disciples, Jesus later that week died on the cross for our sins, didn't he? And he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the good news, the gospel. Well, we're going to start right in Mark, Mark 9, or Mark 16, verse 9. And when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Wow. Of whom he had cast seven devils out of her. Wow. And she went and told them that had been with him, that means the disciples, as they mourned and wept. See, the disciples didn't believe it. They think he's dead. And they're in an upper room, locked in an upper room because they're scared of the Jews. And they're locked up there and crying and sad because their Savior, who they followed and traveled with for three and a half years, was dead. And when they had heard that he was alive, because Mary told them, I saw him, I saw him, and had been seen of her, believed not. They didn't believe. And after that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. That was what we talked about Wednesday. They didn't know it was him, but Jesus was walking with them. And, and they found out when he went into their house and he ate dinner with them and he broke the bread and blessed it. And then he disappeared. He vanished out of their sight, the Bible says. And they were so excited, they ran all the way back to Jerusalem. They said, did not our hearts burn within us? Because Jesus had shared the Bible, the scriptures with them. And they knew it was him. And they ran back to tell the disciples. And again, they didn't believe. And while they were there telling them, Jesus appeared in the midst. Wow. And he said, peace be unto you. They were terrified and affrighted and scared to death. They thought it was a ghost or a spirit. And Jesus said, why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for 
a ghost or spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see I have. And they believe not. But then Jesus said, give me some food. So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb, the Bible says. And he ate it in front of them. And then they knew it was the Lord. Oh, were they excited. Here's another picture I have of it. And he begins to talk to them. And he begins to explain God's plan from the beginning. He tried to help them understand verses in the Old Testament back in the beginning. And he shared verses just like he did with those two men on the Emmaus Road. And he explained to them that this has been God's plan from the beginning. Remember, we talked about it when Adam and Eve sinned and they got kicked out of the garden right here and there. God promised them to send a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus. And he tells them that. And he says, now you've seen all this. I needed to come. And I knew that I, when I came, my part of God's plan was that I would suffer and die. And he told them that. He says, remember our son born to die? He knew it. When he came and his part was to come and to die for our sins and to be buried and to rise again. And he's telling all this to his disciples. And he also tells them that he's going to go away to heaven, but he is going to send the Holy Spirit to come. Now, God the Father and God the Son, who is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit are all three in one. So when Jesus leaves, he's not going to leave them alone. He's going to send the Holy Spirit to help them tell other people about him. He is so excited. And he, so they, they just are thrilled to death. Now, one of the disciples was not here when this was going on. We don't know where he was, but the Bible says he wasn't there. And that was Thomas. Well, Jesus leaves them. And when Thomas came back, oh, are they excited? They said, oh, we have seen the Lord. And you know what Thomas said? Except I see his hands and the print of the nails and put my finger into his side, I will not believe. Wow. I hope you're not like that now. I hope when someone tells you about Jesus that you're not the type to say, I'm not believing that. Well, eight days later, the disciples were all within and Thomas was with them. And then came Jesus again into the midst. And again, he didn't open the door. He just appeared. And again, he said, peace be unto you, because they're scared. And he reached, he said to Thomas, he looked right at Thomas. And he said, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Oh, Thomas, he believed then, didn't he? And Jesus, see, he had to see Jesus to believe. And so Jesus said, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That'd be me, because I believed in the Lord. But how did I know? I hadn't seen him. Well, I've heard this book, the Bible, haven't I? We can believe that Jesus died and was buried and rose again, even though we weren't there to see it because of this book. This book could be called the Jesus book because it's all about him from the beginning to the end of how he would come to forgive us of our sins and to save us. The Bible says these things are written, they're written in here, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. That life is up in heaven. It's all believing that this is God's book. We need to sing our B-I-B-L-E song about the Bible. Remember our second verse is about the roadmap. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E spells Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, it's a road map, don't you see? It'll lead you straight to.
to the heavenly gate, the B-I-B-L-E spells Bible. We need to believe this book is true. Remember Jesus told them at the Last Supper, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to heaven. God is up in heaven. He's the way to God. And that's what we have to believe. Do you believe that? Have you asked Jesus to be your Savior from your sin today? I pray that you will if you haven't.